Okay, so um, I will continue with step two. Discover the network, and they ask us to explore the network and to determine the IP addressing of the serial interfaces that Router West HQ shares with Routers Branch One and Branch Two. Um, and they tell us to access Router West HQ remotely. Um, Remote access, uh, in this case, means uh, using the Telnet service, and we can access the uh, West HQ router either from the Net Admin PC down here, or we can do it via the Branch One router. Um, it's probably easier to do it through Branch One because doing it through PC Net Admin will have to first go into branch 2 and then from branch 2 go on to uh, Router West HQ so I'll try that command line interface Cisco enable class and I mean um, now they don't give us the IP address for uh, interface S000 on Router West HQ, but they give us the interface, um, the IP address for the interface on S000 on Router Branch 1, which is the one um, on the table. It's the one ending in two 246. Um, because it's a serial connection, we know that there are only two usable addresses, so if one of them is 246, um, well we can guess that the other one is 245. Uh, we can go ahead and try that. So we use the telnet command. Looks like we got the right <laughs> IP address. So Cisco enable class and we're in. As you can see it's now Ruto West HQ. So in order to do what they ask us, which is to um, find all the IP addresses, we can use the show. IP interface brief command and now we're able to see all the IP addresses that um, we ask for <coughs> um, and we can go ahead and copy these I uh, addresses into the blank spaces in the table if you want so that concludes step two and now we can move on to step three, configure static and default routing. Um, first, they ask us to configure a summary static route using next hop address of 192.0.0.2 um, to the east region. And below we can see all the IP addresses um, for the east region subnets. And after that, we also asked to configure a default route on Router West HQ to send the internet um, to send to the internet all other traffic for destinations that are not found in the Router West HQ routing table. And we are told to use the outbound interface or exit interface argument. Uh, so let's try and do the summary static route. Now, how do we do a summary static route? Um, if you look at all the IP addresses, they all have the first two octets in common, the 192, 168. And in the third octet, we have a zero in some of them and a one in others. Now, th the zero tells us that all eight bits in this octet are, are zeros. Um, however, the one tells us that only seven bits from left to the right are zeros and that the last 
bit is a one um, so basically in the third octet uh, there's only seven bits in common so taking the eight bits and the eight bits from the first two octets uh, we get 16 and if we add the other seven we get 23 which means we're dealing with a slash 23 summary um, subnet mask what does that mean well slash 23 means we'll have a subnet um, a summary subnet mask of 255 255 254 dot zero so let's try and configure that um, summary static root Count T The summary static IP address will be um, 192.168.0.0 and, .0. and the reason for that is that um, only the first two um, octets have all the bits in common uh, and in th the third and the fourth um, there will be different bits So and that's done. Now we can configure the default route. Zero dot zero dot zero dot zero space zero dot zero dot zero, zero s space and the exit interface in this case is um s zero slash one slash zero so that's done now uh, and they tell us to verify static and default routing which basically means that they want us to run the um, uh, show IP root command. So what do I do? And uh, we can see that there's a the summary static root is there, and the default uh, static root is there. We could also do a verify connection by pinging, but it shouldn't be necessary. Um, well, in the real world, it, it would be necessary to check, but we're not asked to do that. So, Now for step four, we asked to configure OSPF on root of SHQ, branch one, branch two. Uh, we need to use OSPF process ID one and area zero. We asked to advertise each sub individually. Um, and on West HQ, we asked to not advertise the subnets to the internet and the East region. So we're told to disable OSPF updates out of interfaces where there are no OSPF neighbors. And we need to configure um, on root of SHQ, uh, we need to include uh, the default routes uh, on the updates to router branch 1 and router branch 2. So let's try and do that. Let me just uh, run the show interface, um, show IP interface brief command. This is just to get a better view of um, the networks. I mean, 
we will only need to advertise the network in common with router branch one and router branch two so we're looking at this network and this network the rest is not necessary so the interface ending in uh, IP address 245 means that the network address will be 244 wildcard mask because it's a serial connection um, this is a 0 .0 .0 0.0.0.3 and the area is 0 um, the following network would be because it, this is also a serial connection ending in IP address 241 so the network address will be 240, 240. and it's a serial connection so the rest will be the same uh, now that's done um, the subnets connect to, uh, to towards the east region it needs to be passive as it's not going to be an OSPF neighbor I'll just use a tab to complete the command same with the interface towards uh, for used for the default routes and that's serial zero one zero um, we also need to include the default route in the updates so Default information originate, and now we should have completed all these um, steps within uh, step within part A uh, of step four. We'll continue um, with routers branch one and branch two in 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 part three in the third video. Uh, where we will modify OSPF operation and so on. Just save this. <coughs>